Today I'm going to show you how to mount this solid and affordable waterproof top case for your motorcycle and basically any motorcycle that has a bracket on the tail. This technique should work well for a lot of motorcycles and it's much less expensive than a standard top case and mounting brackets. The last bike I modified with this very similar technique was my BMW RT1200. I used a big aluminum plate because I had the plate and it's probably about the same weight as this flat stock here. Uh, before I got started, it just seemed like it was easier to grind off this uh, the finish that comes with the uh, any kind of steel stock typically. I'm just going to knock off the mill scale here so I can paint it and uh, make sure it doesn't rust. I live on an island <laughs> next to some salt water and everything rusts down here. So I'm going to just take off the uh, take off the mill scale so I can make sure the paint sticks to it. And then I'll repaint it again uh, once I scratch it up and put holes in it and make sure there's not a lot of rust on here. So after I get both of those uh, painted, I let them it out and dry and then I start measuring. Um, measuring is a pretty important uh, component <laughs> process to do when you're drilling holes in and this is not really an expensive case um, but I would hate to have to go back and uh, re-drill holes and patch the holes and actually I think I actually uh, mismeasured one of the holes despite my best efforts so I would say uh, make sure you measure the holes. Uh, the holes that are in this uh, mounting plate that comes stock, standard with uh, V-Strom in this case. Um, the problem I had uh, makes it harder is the mounted, there's two mounting holes right there just to the left of my, or just to the right of my left hand. You'll see the, the raised mounting holes. Um, that's the problem. Uh, with this mounting brake makes it a little bit harder. Otherwise, if I didn't have to access those holes um, to remove that bracket, uh, it would not be a big deal. But um, I actually have to have some plates here that I can um, bolt on to the case, then bolt it on to the bike from underneath. And uh, it's just, just a little bit more uh, technical stuff that makes it a little bit harder. But once you get everything measured up, you kind of know where everything's going to go. Uh, time to start drilling holes. And I decided to start with the, the brackets, the holes that were actually on the mounting plate first. Uh, that way, once I could slip some bolts in there, there's not a lot of play. There's not a, a lot of room for error, despite the fact that I still made an error. Um, once you drill the holes and you can slip the bolts into that mounting plate, uh, the stock mounting plate, um, you can make sure that that thing doesn't slide around. As long as there's bolts in there, you're, the, uh, the spots are not going to move too greatly. And it's not so critical um, where you drill the holes in the cases, but I would say uh, the wider you can get those mounting points, the, the more stable it is, the less chance that you're going to have a failure. I crash a lot, so it's pretty important that I make sure when the bike goes down, the, the case doesn't get ripped off. It's pretty sturdy plastic, but you know, plastic has its limits, just like everything else. <laughs> There's no indestructible material, so it's kind of good to keep that in mind and build it as steady or as solid as you possibly can. And that's what I try to do every time <laughs> to eliminate the flaws in my engineering. In this situation, I even had to uh, enlarge the enlarging the holes uh, that were pre-drilled in the uh, the base plate I had to large uh, make those larger because I had uh, I had the perfect bolts except they just weren't quite small enough to go through those holes so uh, drilled those out and uh, started placing those uh, steel plates on top there so I could drill holes in the top case and you just have just go slow use your head make sure you don't mount it uh, make sure you don't mount cut the holes in the wrong direction make sure your case is pointed the right way make sure it's gonna fit um, that's one of the mistakes I made initially 
was I wasn't I didn't place it uh, far enough away from the seat to get the seat off so don't do that make sure everything fits there's an old saying in carpentry uh, measure twice cut once um, in this case it's measure twice drill once um, but in my case, I like to measure six times <laughs> and drill twice. <laughs> yeah, I, I am not a craftsman by any stretch, but uh, I, I really enjoy making my own stuff, even when I fail, even when I screw things up. So once you have those holes uh, drilled out in your straps or your plate, it makes it a lot easier to find the holes that you want to drill on the case. You just kind of slide it into place and plop your bolts in as you go. Make sure your top plate is married to your uh, straps or plate or whatever you want to uh, put on top of there. And then you just move the, the whole apparatus once it's uh, bolted together. You just move it over to the places that you want to drill in the case. Then at each hole, I would suggest putting a bolt in to secure, keep, the, keep that plate from moving around. You don't want to drill more than four holes like I did. <laughs> so once you get it all lined up and perfectly drilled, you want to waterproof. And what I would suggest is just putting a massive amount of caulk, some um, wet weather bead, a bead of wet weather, anything, uh, any, any kind of caulking would work pretty well, but you want to make sure you fill the holes up and it goes all the way through the case. You don't want water coming in, into your waterproof box. Um, I had, this is the third time I've done this and I have yet to have any water coming in the case, except for I did, uh, bust one of the seals on a Pelican case. Uh, one of the seals started leaking, so I had to replace that, but um, yeah, I had to order one from Pelican, so uh, it was none of my holes that I drilled that were the problem. It was uh, uh, the rubber seal around the opening that failed. So. so once you get everything sealed up and bolted to the mounting brackets, then you can uh, put that thing around and take the whole apparatus and bolt it to your bike. Um, I had to remember that I had to put the uh, brackets on first before I put the uh, the mounting the stock plate back on the bike because I had to have access to those two holes but if that's the case for you just keep that in mind as you're going along and, and it will save you a lot of time and heartache <laughs> don't learn from me don't do it the hard way yeah but I finally got this thing bolted on and it was just about almost perfect. Uh, it, I've been riding now with it for a couple of months. I've got probably 5,000 miles on it. And it rains every day on this side of the island, especially in the rainy season. So I've ridden a lot in the rain. I've had it sitting out in the rain. I've had all my camera gear, laptop, all that stuff sitting in there. But uh, what the final result was this very rugged, amazing top case. And uh, it comes with a lot of foam that you put inside and you can cut out whatever. If you need to immobilize your equipment, uh, the pictures show uh, camera lenses and all that stuff sitting inside there. Completely immobilized. Um, but yeah, it's a very rugged case. I highly recommend it. I think I got about 70 bucks into this installation with the steel plate. I didn't buy any bolts, but still you're probably looking at five, six bucks most for uh, the steel if you wanted to go. And there's, that's one of the cushions that goes in the bottom, covers up all that messy caulk that was in there. And if you cleaned it up good, nobody would know it wasn't a professional installation. <laughs> well, I hope you got something out of this video. Maybe you learned something. Maybe uh, you were inspired enough to try something like this on your own. Uh, it's very fulfilling to build your own stuff. I've been making my own stuff for several years now, uh, mainly because most of the time uh, people don't make the stuff that I want or the people that do want so much damn money <laughs> for it that I would never consider buying it. You know, I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna spend $500, $800 on a top case. It's just not gonna happen. Um, number one, I don't have that much money. And number two, even if I had that much money, I probably wouldn't spend it on some ridiculous box that goes on top of my bike. 60 bucks, that's a fair price. Um, you know, a, a couple of hours of work, a few bolts. It just gives you so much pleasure to know that you built it. And 
you know, somebody looks close at this bike, they'll, they'll never know that this is not, this probably didn't come with, with the bike. I mean, unless you know V-Stroms. If you know, if you know equipment really good, you probably know um, this didn't come with the bike. But most people would never know. And, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of people like me that see your bike on there and go, wow, that's a nice top case. You built that yourself. That's pretty cool. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> Can I buy you dinner? <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a, leave me a comment. Um, if you've done something like this, let me know. Let me know if you got any questions, especially. And uh, maybe... Uh, Send me, uh, send me a link to your video of your process of your doing whatever modification, do what, do DIY, anything that you've done to your bike. I'd be interested in seeing that. Later.